Okay. First of all, I want to apologize for the audio. I know this sucks, but the only uh, the only microphone I could find that would work uh, well enough was my Plantronics headset that I use for, for uh, actually it's a telephone. So I'm using that right now uh, through the USB. So I apologize. I'll get a decent headset soon. So anyways, this is a follow-on to the punch-out re- repair video that I did previously uh, where we had some video issues. Um, my buddy took his board back and threw it in the cab, and the video was fine, but he noticed some sound issues, uh, specifically the music and the background uh, noise was gone. He ha- he still had the, uh, the speech. Uh, for those of you who have played the game, um, there's a speech synthesizing chip on it, and you can hear, you know, when they announce the announcer, I mean, when they announce the boxers, that is, um, and you can hear the people when they're fighting and things like that. Uh, but he was missing all the music and, like, the crowd cheer and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm going to go over just a little bit um, some of the sound circuitry for Punch-Out, which all exist on the CPU PCB. And um, there's two channels here. You can see uh, M sound, master sound, or uh, S sound, slave sound, similarly for, uh, like, the master and the slave videos that are shown below. Um, easy way to remember which is which is that you can think of it M as music um, and S for speech, even though I don't think that was, that's why they are originally uh, labeled that way. But anyway, uh, it, it's kind of the same circuitry. There's a uh, there's a, a pair of, or it's a quad actually, op amp, uh, and two are used for the, uh, the master uh, sound and two for the slave sound. So if we follow this back, let's just go back here for a minute. Uh, M sound is the master sound. If we follow this trace, this is the uh, the final uh, amplifier that that drives um, outside uh, to the external world. And I, I believe there's a uh, there's an amplifier right on the monitor chassis for for most of these uh, Nintendo systems. So this is not powerful enough to drive a speaker, uh, but it's uh, I believe a line uh, output level. So you can probably uh, use any other kind of external amplifier. I have one down in the lab that I use for this. So what I did first was basically, you know, um, take a look at this signal right here that's that's feeding from the final amplifier here and see if I could get anything out of it, and it was pretty much nothing. So then what I did is I just started working my way back. I started sampling all these different points to see uh, if I could get any any sound at all, uh, which would indicate, you know, uh, where, where the component uh, or what component would be the problem. For example, if I'm not getting anything here and then I start looking at the input of this final amplifier and I get a noise, or I get some sound, even though it's faint, um, that tells me that it's probably um, this last, this final uh, transistor. So I checked this point here, still was not getting anything, and then I worked my way back. Um, again, this this cap, for example, if it was um, if it was broken and it was an open, uh, then that could be stopping the signal from from getting from this final op amp on. Um, so I checked it on this side of the cap, still nothing. On this side of the cap, nothing. Uh, this is just a, a buffering amplifier. I checked the input to the buffering amplifier, nothing. This is an inverting amplifier. I checked both the output and input and still got nothing. Uh, again, followed it down here. You can see there's another cap in series here um, that appear to be fine. Didn't get any signal on either side. And then we get down into, let me just move this here. And so we are at the other end of this cap here. We move down and it splits off and comes into it looks like some mixing circuitry for two ICs. We have 4F on this side and we have 4H on that side. Now, only one of these is going to be populated. And I really don't know why they both show the schematic. It could be that they had plans for a lot more uh, audio capability, um, other music or other background, whatever. Um, but in the case of the PCB that I'm looking at, only 4H and this associated circuitry here, uh, I believe this is a, a ROM and a RAM, um, uh, exist on the PCB, and the rest of this is just left blank. <clears throat> so you can see the signal comes down here, and uh, this is basically some resistors that they use for mixing these two audio channels that come out of this IC here. And this IC is the 20A0C, I'm sorry, 20A03. It was a custom uh, microprocessor that was developed jointly by Nintendo and Reco, uh specifically for um, their arcade games, and it was actually the follow-on um, used for the Nintendo Entertainment System, the old 8-bit NES that 
I'm sure a lot of you guys own. So this was the main microprocessor that was used in that system. It's basically a 652 core with some additional um, uh, audio capability, I believe. So I started looking at, uh, you know, again, I followed it down to here and then ultimately looked at the output of uh, these two uh, channels here, and both of them were dead. There was basically just nothing coming out of them at all. Um, and knowing that this is a microprocessor, I started to look at this bus to see what was it doing. Is it is it actually accessing the ROM and AM uh, properly? And what I found is that every single one of these address lines was tied to a fixed value, and I, and I just simply used my logic probe for that. And the only way that that should ever happen, given this is a microprocessor, is if there's simply some uh, seriously screwed up inside of here, or this is being reset. In other words, this reset signal is being pulled low. Um, so I very easily checked this reset signal using my probe and found that it was a high, which means this guy should not be in reset. So really, there's no way that this uh, address bus should ever be held steady state. It should always be going out to ROM and grabbing information, and then internally the program would increment the address in the very next cycle. Um, it should be you know, grabbing the next bit of information from, from the ROM or the RAM. So the fact that this thing is just frozen high um, tells me that it's probably a bad micro. Um, conceivably, yeah, I don't see how a, a ROM or a RAM could cause the entire bus to freeze like that. Uh, maybe one or two bits uh, could be forced high or low if, if there's something wrong with the ROM or the RAM. But the fact that every single bit on this address bus is frozen um, tells me that's pretty much a CPU issue. Um, luckily, you can still grab your hands on this micro, even though it was custom made for Nintendo back in the day. Uh, worst comes to worst, you could probably gut an old uh, NES system too and pull the chip out and use that as well. So, um, luckily, uh, John, the guy who owns this board, is a uh, Nintendo versus freak, and he's got a bunch of them um, that he's that he's got around his shop there. So, uh, I'm going to grab some from him. We'll go down to the lab, we'll swap out, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so here we are. We're back in the lab. There's Punch-Out. There's the PCB. Um, and I don't think they make a Punch-Out to JAMA adapter. Um, but like a lot of the other Nintendo games, like uh, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., the video is inverted, and there is no onboard audio amp. So what I did was I grabbed my Donkey Kong uh, to JAMA adapter and just made just threw on a fingerboard and had it um, clipped up where it needed to be so that I could power this guy and get the audio and the video off of it. So, and it looks like it's working. Um, so we're in free play mode here, and uh, for those of you who own the game, you know that when you're in free play mode, you should be hearing some background music playing right now, uh, and we got nothing. Um, so if we take a look at the board, if you remember earlier when we were looking at the schematics, this is the RP2A03. Um, let me make sure you can see it here. And this is the ROM that goes with that and the RAM that goes with that. Now, if they did decide to populate it, this is where that other one would go, and the ROM and the RAM for that one as well. So if I have my trusty logic probe here, I can start probing some of these address lines. I believe all the, these upper ones here are address lines. And you can see that one's forced low, that one's forced high, high, high. So these address lines are just, they're not doing anything. They're just being stuck in their steady state which should really never happen. So I'm suspecting that this is actually the problem here, that it's just a bad CPU. And luckily, like I said, the owner, John, had a bunch um, at his house, so he brought some over in this very nice anti-static napkin here. So, <laughs> so I'll swap one out, and uh, we'll see what happens, so stay tuned. Okay, so here we are. We got our new uh, 20A... 03 installed and let's fire her up. Hey, beautiful. So that's all it was. Looks like it was just a bad micro. And let's see if we can point it up here. I believe this is the switch here. There we go. So we'll let that count down and we'll make sure that we get our crowd cheer and uh, associated music. But I think we're in good shape here. I only have one audio channel hooked up right now, so you can't hear Glass Joe being announced. But there's our crowd. There's our music. So I think we're in good shape. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit about the audio circuitry and punch out. Um, it's actually not too bad. 
Uh, there's a couple of channels that get mixed in there, and it's um, a little bit to understand some of that stuff. But other than that, it's it's not too bad. It's pretty straightforward. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Take care.